Well, hello, and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan, and today I have my friend Miriam Evers in the hot seat. How are you doing, Miriam? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Well, this welcome. Great. I've, I've wanted to get you on here for a little bit, and I'm glad we finally made it made it happen. Yes, so, finally, after all these months. After all these months. Uh, Miriam and I, we met at the Eddie Adams Workshop. That's uh, right. Which is a workshop that you basically produce along with a lot of other people but you're sort of the lead producer right right yeah and what we have a little announcement to make that's right today is the last day for the applications for the eddie adams workshop so go to eddieadamsworkshop.com slash apply i believe it is or just go to eddieadamsworkshop.com and click apply that's even better um to to sign up and get your application in because till midnight tonight till midnight tonight so only if you're watching live unfortunately will you get this (laughs) get this note um but um, before we start, I just want to give a couple quick shout outs and thank yous to um, Adorama, which is where we are uh, recording this podcast today. Uh, thank you, Adorama. They have other events going on other than Photo Brigade events, and you can check them out at photobrigade.com slash, or excuse me, that's wrong, adorama.com slash events, um, as well as uh, Canon Professional Services. Thank you, Canon, uh, for your support. Tenba Bags and uh, Rode Microphone for these these microphones that make us sound so nice. They're amazing. We were just getting some compliments actually about the, the sound quality of these mics. So thank you, Rode, for, for hooking us up. So um, with that out of the way, I want to uh, just sort of start chatting with you a little bit about what it is that, that you do. You're a, you're a photographer based here in New York. Yes. But you also produce tons of workshops all over the world. That's right. Um, can you give me a, an idea of, it's called, in, in your workshop company's called? PhotoQuestAdventures. Dot com. Dot com. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when did you start uh, uh, producing these workshops? I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you about, about this because I'm also doing my first workshop and I, I'm, I'm nervous about it. Right. And, you know, you've been doing these all over the world. Um, can you give me a little background on, on the, the business? Yeah. So pretty much when I... Uh I started out studying photography as a minor in college. I went to school uh, at Southampton College. And uh, my major was uh, public relations and advertising. And uh, while I was going to school, (coughs) excuse me, um, I I worked for a fashion photographer out there and I had no idea who he was back then. I met him on the beach one day and this guy came over and he was, I was there with a, a, a few friends and He asked me, like, can I take your picture? And we're like, who is this creepy guy, you know? Uh So we started talking to him, and uh, he said, oh, I'm a photographer. And he just told us his name is Bill. And uh, anyway, a few months later, we we all became friends with him. And uh, we would go to his house, and I would see all these magazines laying around. And and I said to him, like, why are you... uh, saving all these magazines like Harper's Bazaar and Vogue and uh-huh. all from the 60s and 70s and he's like well I shot all the covers <laughs> yeah it's like oh <laughs> wow Im- impressive so it turned out this guy I don't know if you know his name but he was a really well-known fashion photographer in the 60s and 70s Bill Solano uh-huh. he passed away last year but uh, anyway we became I became friends with him and and uh, I worked for him a little bit over the summers when I was in college, which was which was really cool. And uh, it, it was really a, 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 an amazing thing to, to spend time with him. I didn't realize until later how really famous this guy was. Yeah, sometimes you so, don't realize it, like when you're actually meeting people, but, but you look back and you're like, oh, wow, you know, yeah. I've, had, I've had some, obviously with the workshops that I've been involved with you at Eddie Adams, meeting up with all these amazing uh, photographers then right. you, and then some some of them you know and some of them you just you don't realize the intensity of yeah how great they really are yeah so that was really an amazing time for me and after college I moved to the city and I got a job um, producing for a photographer James Porto uh-huh. um, I worked for him for five years I produced for him and I uh, was a studio manager for him uh-huh. and that was really uh, I loved working for him and he was super busy um, he did a lot of covers for Wired Magazine, Time Magazine, and interestingly, when I worked for him, I never really met the photo editors or the art directors that he worked for, but uh-huh. we always talked over the phone. And then, of course, after all these years, I started working for the Eddie Ams Workshop, and then I met 
when he was still alive, I met Jay Colton. I'm like, oh my God, I used to talk to you over the phone all the time when I worked for James yeah, Porto. Yeah. And so it was really interesting. I, you know, James Porto worked for Marianne Golan and when she was at Time Magazine and there were so many people involved at the workshop and I was like, wow, this is so crazy. You know, yeah. it's such a small Amazing world. networking event. Yeah. I mean, because is that, is that workshop on the scale of the workshops that you, that you produce, it's probably the largest, I would imagine. Yes, it's the largest, but uh, it's very different, of course, from what what we do. Uh, Najat Nabo is here in the audience. Uh, she's my business partner, and so we do about ten, eight to ten international workshops a year. A more intimate group. Yeah, we only take twelve uh, photographers. So while we're while we're talking about this, I, I, I'm going to start playing a slideshow, and this is from Myanmar. Sure. This is from a previous yeah, trip. Yeah, we just of yours. went to Myanmar uh, in uh, in November last year. And um, you're going to be going again. We're going, yeah, we're going again. We actually went with uh, Elizabeth Christ from uh, National Geographic, who was the uh, leader and editor on that trip. So oh, we wow. had a really great time with her, and uh, traveling with her was was really. And uh, these are a these are experience. all your photos from the trip. Yes, okay. these are mine. Yeah. And um, and so you also have this trip again coming up soon. Yeah, we're going back in March uh, of 2016. So it's actually a lot of people because we've traveled so much and uh, I've been to so many countries. People always ask me like, what's your favorite destination? And that's one thing that's almost impossible to answer because there's so many beautiful countries, you know, yeah. especially to photograph. Uh, but I think Myanmar is definitely in my top five. Yeah, the top five changes all the time. But uh, <laughs> it's it's beautiful. It's still you enough know, that you want to go, you know, continue going back. Yeah, it's are, it's just different. Um, you feel like you're going back in time. Um, the people are incredibly nice. Um, the food is amazing. The hotels are all amazing. It's like it's it's a beautiful trip. And so, you visited. Uh, uh, these are all young boy monks. It looks. They're like. actually girls. Girls. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, they're nuns. They're going to be nuns. Uh. Um, and it was really special when we were there, you know, it is it is becoming more touristy, Myanmar. But uh, when we were there, we um, we were part of the ceremony where uh, little um, boys and girls become monks and nuns. And that was really an interesting day and, and to follow them. It was really hot that day. And so day you were with a group of, of students on this? Yeah, we had about 12 uh, amateur photographers. So we take amateur photographers all over the world and they are, you know, doctors, lawyers, accountants. Right. Uh, some of them are super talented. I mean, even Elizabeth Chris said that a few of these clients that came on the trip really could be working as a photographer. Interesting. But, you know, when Don't you're... Don't tell them that. No, when you're, <laughs> when you're a full-time lawyer, I'm sure you don't want to switch that salary to a yeah, photographer's salary. True. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyway, we were there for about 12 days, and uh, yeah, it was really a wonderful place. And I know it's going to change in the next few years, but um, if anybody has a chance to go to Myanmar, I would say try to go in the next few years. So how so, how, how, how so do you mean it's going to change? Um, I just feel like it's going to be more touristy. Um, because it's opening up more. It's opening up. It has opened up. Uh, more and more American tourists are going. and uh, That's beautiful. So we were there, you know, shooting sunrise every morning, and uh, it's magical. It, it, this it's is part of your thing where you guys actually go up in hot air balloons. That's right. I think I looked yeah. at your itinerary for this upcoming trip. I was like, oh, hot air balloon. Yeah, Amazing. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's so peaceful. And when we were in the hot air balloon, we we kind of floated over this monastery and we heard chanting and oh, it was wow. like, it was, it was incredible. So it's a really beautiful country and... Uh, it's a beautiful photo. Thank you. It's hard ne not to get a good photo there, honestly. It's, like <laughs> it's so easy to shoot. And the people are so nice. They all want to be photographed, you know? So that's, that's really nice. Um, so you are, you are Dutch. That's right. <laughs> Uh, born and raised in the Netherlands. Yeah. And when did you when did you come to the the USA? Um, I came when I was uh, well. I'm not going to tell you my age because okay, then you know how right. old I am. <laughs> uh, I came when I was pretty young. I went to college, and uh, I went to high school in the Netherlands, and then I went to college uh, in New York, uh -huh. Southampton College. Oh right, right. Yeah, you're just saying that. And um, yeah. Then I moved to New York City, worked for James Porto, and then started freelancing after I worked for him for five years. I worked for a bunch of really cool photographers like uh, Rob Van Petten. I don't know if you know his name. He's a fashion photographer as well. Uh -huh. uh, we used to travel all over the United, United States and we'd go to Miami or LA or 
he would get really big advertising shoots. So we had a lot of fun uh, working together. Um, then I freelanced and then um, eight years ago, uh, Najan and I started PhotoQuestAdventures.com. And uh, we've had a lot of fun traveling and we've about, so So I saw, I think it, you, you've been to how many countries? There's like 75 or something yeah. like that. I'm sure yeah. maybe it's grown since you've written that it's, on your bio, I right? I mean, it keeps growing and you know, Najan and I actually, we always try to come up with new destinations. And of course we want to go to destinations that our clients want to go to. Uh, but you know, sometimes it's like, okay, let's try to pick countries we haven't been to. Right. So that's that's an interesting thing too. Next year we're adding some countries where we both haven't been to. So that will be something new and and exciting. Very cool. Very cool. I'm. I, I mean, I, I've never actually been. Well, I guess I have been to Asia. I, it would, uh, India is technically Asia. I, for some reason, that never clicks in my head that India is Asia. But yes, I have been to Asia. Very. But but how many Asian countries have you been to? Do you do you often hit up that continent? You know. I don't know how many, but uh, we've been to India a few times, actually. We've done different trips there. We've done the Pushkar Festival, and we've done a tiger safari there. We've done the regular Golden Triangle, let's say, trip in India. Uh -huh. um, next year, we're doing a, uh, a different kind of trip in India, um, and it's also during a festival that uh, is a little bit more off the beaten path. Um, so we try to, you know, change things up and go to different countries. We've been to Thailand many times and went to Bhutan once. Uh, that was a really beautiful country as Bhutan. well. Bhutan. Mm, very off the beaten path yeah. as well. So that was interesting. Incredible. When, um, so you already had mentioned that you, you have your, your mentor and everything. Was, when, can you remember back to the first time you actually started picking up a camera and shooting for yourself? Yeah, I mean, I was pretty young. I think I was like 12 when I got my first camera, first Nikon camera. And uh, I've always been interested in photography. And when I was studying photography as a minor in college, I really got into it, especially because we, we took black and white um, dark room and color dark room classes and I loved being in the dark room that was always so exciting to me do you miss that um, do you do that anymore I, no I don't and I do miss it I really uh, I loved it so that's kind of unfortunate that's a different whole different time now but yeah I was actually the last uh, I think class that had real film classes at, at my school Ohio University right. and I was actually the first student that went digital in my university wow. which is kind of crazy they kind of like, oh my gosh, Kaplan, why are you doing this? You right. know, and I'm like, well, because I'm able to shoot five times, you know, ten times more pictures than most of the students in the class. Because right. usually it's like, you know, back then it was shoot two or three rolls per week or something for an assignment. Right. And I'm just like, Pfft. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's all different, but I do, I do miss being in a dark room for sure. Uh huh. Were One you good day at we'll it? offer a dark room class again. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Maybe like do a, a workshop someday that's all film. Right. Yeah. But the, the logistics of that of, are a of little getting tricky. It, yes. Yeah, getting it and editing it because I imagine at these at these workshops with, when you're with all these you know students, you've got to teach them workflow. Right. You've got to yeah. you know keep on them. Uh, what is the process? Do you have like you know you go out during the day and then you have a um, an evening editing session or yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, you know, we're very casual in our workshops. We um, we have, you know, we do portfolio reviews. Like when Elizabeth Christ, for example, was in Myanmar with us, we did a lot of portfolio reviews, not really like workflow or, you know, we didn't really do that on that right, trip. It right. was more about, she was teaching storytelling and how to edit. Um, so, you know, it, it, it is casual. We do teach um, every other night or so. We do portfolio reviews, but also it's, you know, it all depends on what happens because, you know, if we have an amazing sunset and something else happens, we keep shooting. Um, so we, we shoot as much as we can on the trips. We do, we pack in a lot of stuff. Um, there's no rest, really. There's no rest. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, Just go, go, go. I know from my experience so, at workshops that I have been with you at like the, the Eddie Adams one that it's no rest either. But yeah, uh, that's a, that's definitely no sleep for anybody. Well, th I mean, it's it's neat because you're actually out every day shooting on an adventure right. every single day in this workshop, which is really cool. Different, totally different experience. Right. right. Yeah, uh, I think that you know when you're on a workshop, I think it's good to, especially if you're in another country shot, and cool. you thanks and you spend all this time and money getting there. You know, why wouldn't you? 
be in a conference room to do a class, you know. I mean, it's fine to do it at night right. after, but right. um, yeah, even at night, honestly, if we're in uh, Namibia or in places where, you know, you can do night photography, we're out shooting uh, star trails or, you know, recently we went to uh, Lapland. We went to finish Lapland with Gabriel Biederman. He was uh -huh. the teacher, uh -huh. and uh, we were—I mean, we never slept on that trip. Well, really. I saw <laughs> some of your guys' photos on that from—I um, don't know if we have them in this in this group or anything. But we—what are they doing? You know, they're all like fishermen. Um, this is on Inland Lake in Myanmar, and uh -huh. they're fishermen, and uh, and they use your—they use their legs to row. Interesting. So it's really. Uh, an interesting thing to see of course these guys were posing for us right but, um, and were you guys on like a similar boat following them yeah we were in like three different boats and we were rotating and uh, the light there was so incredible I mean it's it was like we were shooting nonstop <laughs> right I would imagine when, was, especially when you get those you know early morning late afternoon yeah, evening yeah. golden lights when yeah, you're it's, it's it's a very cool place mm-hmm um, what is the the reaction to people like I, I know that when I, I I'm a travel photographer also but usually I'm alone when I'm doing right. it or I'm you know with a small camera being right. inconspicuous but when a whole group of you know uh, amateur photographers come with their fancy fancy gear I don't know if they bring their own gear if you supply them yeah with no gear they or they bring their own gear and they have the best gear of course of course they yeah. have everything right <laughs> well you know. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it can be a, a little tricky, but, um, you know, a lot of times when we're in these countries, like, especially in places like Myanmar, where people are very open to being photographed, um, we, we kind of give people an hour or two to walk around, you know, we'll meet up again after a certain time, or we give them, give them an assignment, uh, it, it all depends a little bit, you know, uh -huh. but, um, yeah, I don't think, uh, I mean, of course, people get overwhelmed, especially, you know, when you're in a really off the beaten path country. Uh, for example, we, were, we went to the most northern part of Vietnam one year, and uh, I brought a little, um, little Polaroid camera with me. Oh, yeah? And we would give, like, prints. Sometimes a we Polaroid bring or Instax? Well, Instax, sorry. Okay. Yes, that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> They're basically the uh, same. <laughs> anyway, we, we gave the, you know, the, the little prints to people. And they had, like, there was one woman. She was in front of us. And, and she looked at the, at the picture. And she had never been photographed before. You know, she had never seen a picture of herself. Uh-huh. So that was, and she started crying. We were like, what's going on? And the guy translated and he said, she's never seen herself before, you know? It's oh, like, wow. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's really an amazing experience. I'm going to blaze through some of these group shots. So you yeah, can these see are some, some the group photos of trips we've done in the past. This is in Easter rise, Island, obviously, Easter Island. That's the Netherlands where we uh, do oh a trip goodness. every year. Because <laughs> I'm from there, so it's a it's a. So fun you've got thing the hookup on, on outfits right, and clogs right. and whatnot, we right? We make everybody do everything. <laughs> <laughs> is that your favorite to kind of uh, go to where you're from? or, or I mean, is No, it I mean, honestly, it's just because of the flowers in the springtime. It really is beautiful, even though I'm from there. It's it's an amazing, beautiful uh, place to photograph the flower fields and yeah. So it's 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 great and we have a friend who has a, a plane. He's a pilot, so he takes the group in small groups up, so you can get aerial uh, shots of the flower fields. So it's 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 a cool trip. Right. We take the the clients to to different off the beaten path places that regular tourists don't go to. Right. And and did you? This was in... Um, that was in Nepal, Nepal yeah. Nepal, yeah, because I was just Unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, that, that whole... This whole area is, gone. is messed yeah, up now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very I, I sad. had some really great... Speaking of, I just want to ma mention of N Nepal. Here at Adorama, uh, I went to at N Nepal uh, last year and had some great photos and never did anything with them. And then, of course, the earthquake just happened. Right. And um, along with myself and Josh Joshua Wright, who, who works here, we're doing a print uh, sale for um, charity, essentially, you know, for, for aid to Nepal. Right. And uh, with with the uh, support of uh, Canon, Nikon, and Intel now, we're, we've raised already, just from them, over $20,000 in, wow. in proceeds that we're sending off to Nepal. That's amazing. So That's really beautiful. I'm going to be uh, linking that. I'll link, I'll link that in below so people can maybe click and buy some prints where they, you know, yeah. not super expensive, but all the, all the money goes to right back to aid to Nepal. That's so. great. Yeah, Very they cool. definitely need it. And uh, 
they still need so much help. You know, the media doesn't really talk about Nepal anymore, but it's uh, it's sa- it's very sad. Right, right. Um, beach? Where is this? Uh, Panama. Oh, in Panama. Panama is a is a great place too. Uh, great tribes. Uh, we're going back there actually this year for New Year's during uh-huh. New Year's Eve. We do trips occasionally during New Year's Eve, and that's really fun. So we decided to go back to to Panama. Uh, so every every trip, it looks like you know between eight and ten. You say? Yeah, we only the maximum you amount is it. twelve. Yeah, because you know more than twelve is 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 hard. This is from our last your uh, last trip. So you got to see all the northern lights yeah, and all that, that kind of really stuff. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a fun trip. And we I think had I saw time. Gabe posted a, like a photo of like he you guys slept in these huts or something or. Well, we slept in these uh, glass igloos. Uh, that was so so much fun you're basically sleeping under the northern lights yeah pretty much oh my god it was hard to sleep i mean we didn't really sleep you know we we were hanging out in the glass igloo looking up in the sky and we're like this is amazing that's awesome. having a bottle of champagne uh yeah so that was fun that was a really different and and fun trip so these are your your trips that you have coming up yep so if anybody's interested berlin prague vienna ethiopia where is this south africa Guatemala, Panama, um, Myanmar, Romania, all sorts of really cool places you're going. Yeah, very different. I we mean, try to mix it up a little bit. Already uh, have seven lined up. Yeah. And, and, we're, you, uh, and you usually build them out about a year in advance or so? Is that yeah, basically the Yeah, we're you, planning 2016, the whole the rest of the year now, and 2017. So, yeah. Right on. It takes a long time to uh, to plan these trips and to, you know, to book destinations. And so, yeah. And so we'll go through a couple, also some of your um, published work. This was, who was this? Uh, this Jane Pauly. Jane Pauly's uh, story you did. I, I photographed her for the last uh, three years or so. Okay. When she did a segment for the Today Show. Um, that was great. It was really fun to work with her and, and uh, photograph her and work with Inside her team. Inside the engine of a, of a plane, Yeah, huh? she did a story every month for the Today Show. Uh, she did a small segment and uh, she would... Um, interview um, people that you know were past 50 years old and they pretty much made a big change in their life um, so it was really fun to, to to work with her crew and she's a lovely lady and yeah it was really nice very smart so we were in Florida here shooting at a uh, baseball field and and it was fun you know I got to know her a little bit and uh, at first she she um, she was she was always very nice but uh, you know, I would get like 20 minutes to photograph her just like everybody else gets. So you get five minutes. Uh-huh. But after a while, she was, you know, they were getting a little bit more flexible with me and giving me more time. And, uh, you know, and then she would be more uh, willing to do other things. Right. And, the you more know. The, you got to build that trust. Yeah. That's so, what I've uh, always found. With so that was that was nice. And uh, we had a great time. Very cool. And I also noticed back here, you, you know, you're doing some, some lighting. What, what sort yeah. of lighting do you, just small systems or do you bring out like big pro photos or what's you know, the deal? You um, know, I used to use like on my travels, I used to only use like one or two flashes, uh-huh. SB 900. Um, but I've been using, uh, for a few years, I used, uh, you know, the Allen Chrome Quadra. And recently, I started using the uh, the new Profoto B2. That okay, just came so the, out. S- the smaller units that are battery powered right. that are easy. Yeah. yeah, because when you're traveling and you have to deal with weight co- uh, restrictions of planes and things like that, you know, you can't bring everything. It's hard. You right. Know, we have weight uh, restrictions all the time. Right. Uh, so you have to be creative and and bring lighting like the the B2, which is small and compact. You know, uh-huh. that's the only really the only way to bring lighting on these kind of trips too. Uh, for Jane Pauly, of course, I had an assistant, and uh, we would bring multiple lighting setups always. Uh huh. So, um, how? So, okay. So you've been uh, like I, I, I've mentioned. We've been talking about all these workshops you're producing. You, you're also taking assignment work. Yes. And and um, this is a business podcast, so we're yeah. always figuring out how <laughs> we're we, you know we make money in this in this world because. Uh, you know, as as you clearly probably know as well, shooting a couple editorial jobs a, a, yeah. a week, even even just a couple a week, isn't going to support you right. full time here, at least in New York City. Yeah, uh, it's rather insane how much just rent costs and the cost of living here right. in the city. So, you know, 
smart folks, I suppose, build businesses outside of that. So that there's another source of revenue and all that. And you guys built this this great uh, workshop um, adventure company. Um, is would you say that uh, you know most of your time and energy uh, in terms of what kind of revenue you bring in comes from that as opposed to assignment work these days? Yeah, I think um, assignment work is definitely it has changed. You know, for me personally, it's definitely harder. It's, it's it's hard for everybody. All my friends, everybody I talk to, it's definitely getting harder and harder. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you have to be creative, and and of course I I work do the Eddie Ams workshop, so that's one uh, source of income. I'm the only paid person uh, right. that works for the workshop, but um, yeah, it's, you know, you have to be creative, and um, I think it's it's tough for freelance photographers, and yeah, we it have really to is. deal with many things in New York City. Our rent is 10 times as, as much as uh, people who live in the Midwest, you yeah. know, and people are like, why are you living in New York City? Like, this is the only place to live. <laughs> right. right. But I, it's, it's hard. But it's, it's even really talking hard. to my parents, they're like, well, you know, you could just move back here and, and buy a house for the amount you pay in rent. Right. Um, and I'm like, well, but it's in Ohio. I mean, right. I'm, I live in New York. You live in Ohio. That's just different. <laughs> it's just different. I've spoiled myself for eight years now. I just I just I can't imagine leaving it now. Yeah. Do you live in the in the city city or do you live in one of the boroughs? No, I live in the city city. Yeah. What's 39th. What? 39th. Okay. So not too far. East side, west side? Uh, east side, yeah. East Between side. Between second and third. Oh, okay. So you're near the, uh, what do you call it? UN. UN. Yeah, it's nice. See a lot of diplomats over there? Yeah, it's quiet. I like it, honestly. You know, I'm close to bathhouse. We have an office uh, oh, right. in the bathhouse, yeah. so I can actually walk there. So the, ba- the bathhouse, um, right. That's on 11th Street, bathhousestudios.com. Ch- yeah, check it out if you're looking for a, a studio to uh, a, a photo studio. studio. You can even bring cars into that sucker, right? That's right. It's amazing. That's the most beautiful space in Manhattan by far. I mean, it's not because I work for Alyssa Adams or because I'm producing the Eddie Ams workshop, but hands down, that place is unbelievable. I mean, basically all, all of Alyssa's places, the... the uh, barn house or the farmhouse as well it's just right. just amazing but uh yeah check out bathhousestudios.com and and uh give them a shout let them know you heard heard of them from the photo brigade <laughs> podcast maybe they'll uh pass you along some sort of deal um maybe i don't know we'll see yeah i'm sure bryce is listening <laughs> <laughs> um so what else what else is going on with you I mean, you're busy. You're busy getting ready to produce. Yeah, the, you know, the, the Eddie Ams workshop is getting busy now. And uh, we're, um, the applications, like I said before, are due tonight. And uh, then what we're going to do in June, we have our portfolio reviews, June 20th, actually. We do them at the Bass House. We have about 45 photo editors that come in. Yeah. And they judge the portfolios. And then we pick the 100 students. And then it gets a little busy because we make the teams. We, we assign the 10 students for each team. Um, we're still in the process right now of, of um, inviting speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always a little tricky because they're busy. Get, they're then photographers. Then you get pro- other team producers, which is what I'm, I'm doing. I'm a team producer this year. Right. Again, I was last year, which yeah. means that I have to end up getting assignments for my specific team of 10 right. and some other logistics and stuff like that, too. Yeah. But man, I mean, it's just, I can't imagine all the moving pieces. That, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, people always ask me, so you only work like the weekend before the workshop? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I go up there and the workshop just happens like just that. Just happens. <laughs> you just do. And, but and it is a year round job. I mean, I don't work full time on it. Like, there's right. months that it is slow. But, you know, Alyssa and I always meet. We, you know, dealing with the sponsors is almost a full time job. Yeah. It's very hard to uh, maintain sponsors. Um, you know, we're always financially struggling. Right. honestly because that Sponsors workshop come in is, and is, is is basically free to the it's, students it's a free workshop so we um you know that's one thing that's always very stressful and and uh and it's hard because you know companies have budget cuts all the time and you know uh certain companies sponsored and a few years they said they, not they, to they, yeah, yeah so that's really tricky and it's hard to get new companies involved especially if they've never been part of the workshop or Right. Um, if they don't know anything about it, you know, they're like, why would we give you money for what? For, you know, <laughs> <laughs> for one weekend. For one weekend, but that's it. But once they've been up there. Once, and, they, um, once they see it and they do it, they understand. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and that's the funny thing. It's almost become its own sort of like fraternity, sorority, sort of, not, I don't know if they're fraternity, I guess you'd say. Um, 
uh, you know, once you're a member, it's such an icebreaker. I mean, every basically almost anybody who's anybody's been there. So so if you are in the mix, you're able to say, hey, I you know, I was uh, alumni of this year. Or right. I saw you talk this this year or that year, and it's just an instant in. Right. I know. Even for students who 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 go through the workshop, it's it's unbelievable how easy it is for them to set up appointments with photo editors i mean i'm friends with a lot of the photo editors and i know like they get thousands of emails every day yeah and they don't have time to respond to emails but when somebody from the workshop says oh i was a student at the workshop or can can i meet with you i know they all most likely will invite the student to their office to look at the work you know which is like a huge benefit of course yeah. Not to mention that these students get to drink with all these editors at the <laughs> yes. bar the days in. <laughs> and get their portfolios critiqued. And, and I mean, like, for instance, I, I've got a, a friend out here in the audience, Nicolas Enriquez, who was, yeah, uh, he was a, student. a student last year. He wasn't on my team, but he was one of my first uh, portfolio reviews. You see, I've never really done portfolio reviews. Right. I didn't quite know that I was supposed to be doing them that first night. So I just got handed a list and sat at a table with balloons. Right. And... Uh, he, he shows up and shows me his amazing work on some gangs here in New York. And and he's since come and spoken here at, at Adorama on uh, some of our things. So just it's, it's such a networking event. And yeah. I, I feel like every year I bring back a half dozen or a dozen new people into my into my circle, right. whether it's just my team or, or people that I've met in passing or yeah, it's, to drink uh, or amazing. at the epic party afterwards. I mean, even the black team, the volunteers for that workshop, if you look at all the names. <laughs> just them, yeah. And you're like, oh my God, all these people are like well-known photographers or they're doing, it's like, And their job is like, you know, the white team is cooking. Right. So that you have to cook for all these people. Then there's the, the security team, the trash team, the, not trash team, but like upkeep. Yeah, and we have a transportation team and uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> the trash team. The trash team. That's a good, I'm going to bring that up. We should bring that up. The there needs to be an official trash team. Yeah. <laughs> but it's 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 incredible. I mean, it is really a, a, a unique experience. And it is, um, you know, like I said, it, it's for me, it's a full time job um, and it's going to get really busy now over the summer. So, right. you know, we try to balance everything. I, uh, you know, we do less uh, trips that I would go on with PhotoQuest Adventures. Right. Uh, you know, closer to the Eddie Ams workshop. So I try to So that's uh, another question combine. I had for you. Now as as your PhotoQuest Adventures has built into like we saw we're going to you're going to you're having 7 already coming up into the next year which is just blows my mind because I've just been trying to put together one thing for the first time and it's just like, "Oh, how could right. you have 7 lined up in advance already?" So so you used to go on all of them bo- both yeah, you guys Yeah, we kind of split it, you know. Najad and I will go um, she will go on one and we'll bring another uh, leader, a teacher, uh, or sometimes it's just the two of us and then I will teach. It all depends on the destination and, and, and the... Some of our clients, honestly, they refuse to go on a trip with us unless we're on the trip. Oh yeah, right, yeah. Which is nice, but then we're like, okay, we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer, gotta Bummer. go. Yeah, yeah, I have to go to uh, South Africa. No, but uh, yeah, so it all depends on the destination and on, uh, you know, what we do. Right on, right on. So, yeah. Very cool. Very but yeah, cool. it's good. It's it's hard to find a balance sometimes. And, um, you know, between the Eddie Ams Workshop, PhotoQuest Adventures, freelancing, Najan and I are also writing a book. Oh, really? We're writing a book. When's it coming uh, out? I don't know yet. Is there a deadline uh, yet? Is it on Amazon yeah, pre-order? <laughs> We, we just wrote another chapter the other night. But chapter that's what two. We do. That's what we do in our free time. We're writing a book. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's a, a book about well, all the, our yeah. adventures oh, okay. and funny stories. Are you, are you planning to self-publish this puppy or are you still looking you into know, it? You know, we haven't decided yet, but uh, I think that uh, we probably self-publish it. Yeah. But it's going to be funny. It's going to be, uh, uh, you know, all our adventures. I mean, all our trips are adventures, hence the name, but... They are true adventures, and we experience really, uh, you know, we have the, the best experiences, and we laugh all the time, and we always say, you can't make this up. Do you, you know, that's <laughs> the name of our book. Well, it has something else in it, but I can't say it, I think. <laughs> Do you have a, a favorite trip that you've been on, a most memorable trip so far of your workshop series? You know, it's also, it's hard to pick one, but, uh, you know, the last five years, we've been going to Cuba, Oh yeah, and Cuba was to me is is incredible. It's changing so much. For the first time we went is about five or six years ago, and uh, 
I fell in love with Cuba. I, lo I love the people there. The, the photo ops there are just endless. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, we were like, oh, we have to go every year because it's going to change. And um, then we went two years later again, and it had changed so much already. And I, really? said, I thought, how is this possible? This it's is only between which years? This is six years ago and then four years ago. Wow. And we went every year, and every year we saw so many changes. Oh, man. I went. And it's still good, don't get me wrong. It's still a great place. But, um, for example, the very first time we went, we only saw old cars. Right. Then the second time we went, there were a lot of regular cars. You know, those Russian Ladas and old, but they're not the old, old cars. Uh-huh. So, yeah, we saw changes, and then uh, we always use the same guide there, and he told us that he brought the CEO of Starbucks there to, uh, you know, scout locations for Starbucks. And I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but no. anyway, it's going to no. change. <laughs> and, you know, we, we love it still, but we haven't been back. We, we went five times, actually. And uh, I, I feel like I want to go one more time. Yeah. I, I went eight years. Well, I guess it is 2008. So whatever that is, eight, t eight, seven, eight years ago now. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was an amazing trip, and I remember them telling me that the folks that I met there come back and visit me next time in ten years. We'll be doing the exact same thing in the same place, which to an extent may or may not be true now. Right? Maybe they got that wrong by about five years, but yeah. but uh, you know, I think it's it's great that they're opening it up so that people can travel. I think it's a it was a silly rule yeah. in general. Totally. Um, but at the same time, it's like you don't want to lose that that certain feel but i don't know the people deserve it you know the people totally. deserve to have have an economy that actually works and some some tour, more tourism i imagine it's going to get crazy busy with yeah, us totally i travelers. mean it's so it's already overcrowded hotels are always overbooked uh we have dealt with that a few times you know where we arrived in havana and we would get a different hotel you know, that stuff is unacceptable everywhere else in the world. But there it's like, oh, it's Cuba. It's okay. It's acceptable. You know, they uh -huh. give you a different hotel and you just deal with it. But, um, yeah, so Cuba is definitely one of my favorite uh, destinations. Favorite destinations. Yeah, and it's, it's so close. It's so close. I mean, it's a 30-minute flight from Miami. You are can't beat that. <laughs> are most of your uh, your clients, I guess you'd say, um, American? Or do you find they're more Yeah, we worldly? have uh, mostly Americans. We get people from Australia, uh, Germany. Uh, but mostly Americans, yeah. Mostly Americans. Some Brits Ew. we get occasionally. Huh. Uh, yeah. Very cool. Well, do you have any thoughts for... Um, well, I guess there's a couple things we could say here. Do you have any thoughts for A, students trying to apply, since since they were coming up with the deadline, for the Eddie Adams Workshop or in future years? Best best ways to, to get a, approved for something like this. Um, and then also in general, just uh, tips for younger photographers trying to get into business, you know, just shooting in general, nevertheless, building a, a, si a side business in photography. Like what, what, are your, what are your tips and thoughts? Is it networking? Is it business you know, savvy? I think that uh, honestly, I feel like almost when a student tells me they're studying photography, I kind of feel like I don't really want to tell them, but I'm like, I wish you were studying marketing or business <laughs> right. instead of photography. And it sounds horrible, but I feel like nowadays, especially things have changed so much for, for, for all the photographers. I think that you, you're forced to do other jobs. You're forced to right. have other skills besides shooting. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying like students shouldn't study photography, but I think they should do something besides studying photography. There's much more to it than the creative side. Yeah. I mean, you have to be a savvy business person. You have to know marketing. You have to be really good on social media unless you can afford to hire somebody full time. Um, you know, there are so many. Uh, it's so it's so different now, I feel like. So uh, I, I, I always encourage students to learn video, to learn how to edit. Um, you know, there's so many different things now. It's harder for everybody, but I feel like you have to be able to do different jobs. Yeah. And you have to be open to it. I mean... I think you do the same thing, you know, you're a freelancer for the New York Times and you do other jobs and yeah, you do this. Whoever. I, I just feel like that you're, you have to and students. Well, it's funny. That it's are like the, mo you know, some of the most prestigious places that I do work for, I, I don't necessarily do it for the money for those places. Right. You know, it's, it's, 
the ones you do for the, the, the money are the ones that not necessarily are the ones that you specialize in, which are right. may, might be events, you know. Some people, some people I, you know, will, will only shoot journalism, you know. Right. They're, they're stuck in it. I will refuse to shoot a wedding or a bar mitzvah or an event or something else that pays well. But I've always been a believer at being a, a generalist. It's practice. You can make a lot of money. And those, uh, you know, I shot a bar mitzvah. And actually, I shot a bar mitzvah and I turned that check around into Canadian cash and went to, to Cuba um, <laughs> with that money. Right. And, and so that was my, you know, I was able to trade off, you know, one day I'm shooting whatever it was, an event or wedding yeah. or something. And next in the next week I'm in Cuba because right. of it. So yeah, no, it's great. And I think, I think as a photographer, as a, as a young photographer, you know, like what you said before, I think, I think everybody should learn how to, how to use lighting. Yes. Lighting you know, is it's a, like, I mean, I'm not saying you would always get jobs where a photo editor would say, you know, I want you to shoot a portrait and I want you to light it. But you need to know, you know, just right. like you should, you're either a writer or you're not a writer, but it's good to, to, to you know, know a little and bit of everything. And right. um, generalize a little bit. I think bit, yeah. for, for students who, who are applying for the Eddie Ams workshop, I think that's one thing that they could learn if they are like into sports photography, you know, maybe they... Or they're just shooting, like you said, journalism. Maybe they um, need to hang out with uh, Cliff Hausner and learn how to use lighting. Yeah, you Cliff Hausner over Pro Photo. Yeah. So I'm just saying, you know, there's. I think people need to be open-minded and not just focus on one thing. Absolutely, I can't. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I mean, I know a lot of freelance photographers, even well-known photographers, who used to have a studio in New York City and they had to give it up and they're working from home and. It's just how it is, you know. I know photographers who bartend on the side, and it's like everybody does what it takes. Everybody does what it takes, yeah. So, and some people give up too easily. I've, yeah. I've had friends that have just straight up, they only were working for, for instance, the New York Times. And, right. you know, in order to live as a photographer, strictly working for the New York Times, I mean, you have to be working every day of the week um, shooting assignments for them. Right. And, and that's just basically to to make it make it by I mean you're not putting money in the bank at no. that point unless no. you're staying in a in a group house or something like that which I've done I mean not in a group house but I mean a, I've lived with a group of people an apartment with eight uh, <laughs> exactly people. that's how we always start my younger sister is <laughs> just moved to New York last year and you know she I'm like trust me everybody goes through this this is just just the way it is yeah um well cool 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 um Am I, have I missed anything that, that, that we should talk about? Any, uh, any, anything we need to plug going on with you and your world? No, I think we, uh, we covered everything. Went over most everything. So maybe we should go over your um, uh, social media. You probably have your own personal ones, uh, like, like uh, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah. What are they? You know, I... Uh she I have a, know. Well, we have a Facebook, of course. I have a Facebook with PhotoQuest Adventures, and I have my own photography Facebook page. Um, you know, honestly, it's really hard to keep up with everything. I know, I know. And it is really a full-time job. And it really I do, is. You know, we, we also have a Facebook page and Instagram and Twitter with the Eddie Ams Workshop. Right. We have other volunteers, actually, who help us with uh, up, updating and, and posting daily um, one volunteer, you know, for example, is in charge of the Eddie Ams Workshop Instagram account, and she is doing this takeover where alumni post every week, which is really cool. Yeah, I saw that. That's really cool. I like but that. But it's, you know, it's a lot of work, and uh, yeah, that's definitely a, the whole social media is a, is a full-time job. Well, that's the, that's the problem is, so, so for instance, for Eddie Ad Adams Workshop, you have like three or four accounts that you have to keep track of. For your, Miriam Evers, you, you as a personal photographer, you know, you've got three or four accounts. Right. Then for PhotoQuest Adventures, it's the same. And yeah. I kind of have the same problem there because, you know, myself and my wife are managing the photo brigade and I'm doing my own and then also my photography page. And, and then, I don't know, it just gets to be overwhelming. And now Snapchat. Snapchat's in. Have you gotten into Snapchat? No, I don't think I'll do that. Anybody <laughs> else? Snapchat? Oh, Look man. how many people are in the audience. It's yes. pretty amazing. There's like 2,000 people 2,000 people back there. Whoa, Thank we'll you start guys the wave. for coming. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, I've really gotten into Snapchat now. It's I, I don't quite, like, I'm still learning it. 
But Isn't that for like high school students? It, it sort of is now, <laughs> but but believe it or not, a lot of adults are picking it up and really utilizing it in cool ways. What's what's neat about it is I like the most. I don't like the part where you just send someone something and it disappears. I like the story function. Right. So you know we could take a video of us talking right now and then just keep adding video clips or photos and write on them and kind of create a never-ending story that just deletes the, fir- the, the first one in the story that you've done. It deletes after 24 hours. So it's kind of like this, uh, almost like a, a security system, an old security system that you'd record on video cassettes and then you'd recycle it at the end. Right. You know, you'd lose the last one. Right. So I, I don't know, it's fun. And then you can see individually who's watched your watched your clips. And, and I don't know, it's huh. very... It's, I don't it's, know. Maybe I'll try it. But, I'm going to uh, show you, yeah. and I'm going to and I'm going to snap snap from uh, the workshop this year. Yeah. So, um, yeah, people can follow me, Robert Kaplan, with a C. Um, yeah. So we talked about your social media. Um, what else? What but else? That is definitely uh, important. Social media. Super it is, important. It's really important for photographers, I think. And I, I honestly, I don't like Facebook. I don't like any of these. Uh, you know, it's it's almost like annoying, but you have to do it, and you have to post pictures, and you have to keep doing it and be on top of it. Right. It's it's really important, and people actually look at your stuff. They might not like it or look at it, but you know, when we travel on on PhotoQuest adventures, I'm I see editors and like they're like, oh, we really liked your images from uh, Myanmar, or you know, they yeah, all look at it. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. I've gotten so. I've gotten shoots from posting Instagrams. I used to, well, I still do use Instagram a lot, but. Instagram has always been my sort of daily iPhone journal, right? right? And I've posted photos from outside, you know, JFK landing at JFK from Barcelona or whatever. And editors call me, hey, can you be at a, at a job in a few hours? Right. And I'm like, hey, you know, they they've clearly are following and, and you're getting right on their timeline. Yeah. I can't, I can't even, there's probably, I probably can't even imagine how many jobs that have resulted in it. Right. But I'm certain that it's made it worthwhile from here, from now, here on out. I used to be a member, or I still am a member, I'm sorry, of sportshooter.com. I don't know if you're familiar with that yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's probably actually where I heard of the Eddie Adams Workshop for the first time because it was sort of the pre-Facebook social media platform. Right. Um, and I remember I got a, a job, you know, that paid, you know, 300 bucks back in college. And the month, or the, the, the yearly fee for that is 25 bucks. So I just said to myself, this is gonna pay for it for the rest of my life. I'm just not gonna ever get rid of it until if and when the, the site just goes away or something right, like that. Right. It's just worth it because it's a nice little advertisement for yourself. Yeah, totally. But things have changed clearly with, uh, with social. Everything's through Facebook and- Everything. Everything. <laughs> are you, are you what, what do you think about like the terms and services of all this like, you know, we, we post these photos. I always try to post watermarked images, but like now you're seeing this Richard Prince. Was that his name? Richard Price? Prince? Prince? Yeah. AKA dickhead. <laughs> um, stealing photos from Instagram and just uh, selling them for 90 grand or something like that at a gallery here in New York. Yeah, it's insane, you know? I mean, it's a whole new uh, podcast, I think, to talk about. Yeah social media yep. in terms of that but i think that it's it's crazy but on the other hand maybe that's an idea for a younger photographer to start working with a lawyer and start finding you know your images online i don't know yeah but that's it is true. really out of control how often it happens to photographers yep. i know it happened to you and uh, it's happened to sure so has, many yeah. photographers it's horrible and uh you know it's that's another full-time job you have to constantly search for for your images online or if nobody's using them it's like how crazy is that on a business end you know that's another thing photographers need to know getting into the business it's not just taking pictures you have to protect your intellectual property you have to you know keep up with social media you have to you know be good at business understand when to raise your prices how to negotiate contracts how to how to spot you know red flags and contracts and i'm sure we'll talk more about that with uh with gail, with gail. who's next yeah because yeah that's we're, her doing thing. Po- we're doing two we're doing two podcasts in a row today we got gail mooney with the um, asmp coming up next yeah it would be so. interesting to ask her about um yeah how she feels about all that stuff yeah a bunch of travel photography we're gonna have today 
she's been all over the place as well. Yeah, so, Saucy was just in Cuba too. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about Cuba, all that kind of stuff. Um, well, I, I, I think that uh, we've pretty much touched base on, on almost anything. Oh, are there any questions uh, from the audience? Or I don't know if there was anything online. No, too early. Too early for I questions. Know. Friday morning is... I know we got to change. We got to change. We got to do it at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do. We do have a question. Go ahead. I'll. I'll repeat it. So the question was, how many people apply to the Eddie Adams workshop, and how many attendees often go? Um, you know, we it, it differs every year, but um, we we usually get about twelve to fourteen hundred applications. Whoa. And then we pick 100 <laughs> students, 50 uh, students who are that. still enrolled in schools and 50 emerging photographers. And some um, <clears throat> the military. military folks as well, which is always neat. And I think, you know, Eddie had a background in the military right. and, and has <clears throat> always made sure to have a contingent of military photographers as well. Was there another one? No? No, it's uh, like a 10% chance. A 10% chance, yeah. Yeah, I mean it is it is relatively slim. I imagine I imagine that you know there's a first run cuz cuz I was there for the process of selecting which is rather sophisticated now. Right. Yeah. Um, I think someone goes through and kind of gets it down to maybe 500 or something or a smaller number. Yeah, we cut it down to about 300 and then uh, in June we uh, when when the editors come in, we do everything online now. It used to be a crazy process where we would sit in my office and manually count all the votes. Oh man. For like two days with five people, it was crazy. And then of course, um, well, I had a meeting with Lauren Wendell from PDN and I, I said to her, you know, we do everything manually and, and she's like, that's crazy. She's like, we'll, we'll, we'll have PDN take over your applications. And right. so, so PDN is actually our, one of our sponsors and they, uh, they're doing the applications and they, they handle all the online applications and, and doing all that, which is wonderful for us. Uh, and then uh, one of her staff members is actually setting up everything. So all the editors have to do is, even though it's live, the images are shown live, uh -huh. uh, we, we vote online. So we have to give him a certain score and the, uh, the results are instant. Instant. So he can see on his computer who voted the lowest right there and then, you Right, know. right. Um, so yeah. that's an interesting thing. But it's for us, uh, it's, it's huge. It's a, it's, it has made a huge difference uh, instead of counting, you know, all these applications manually and I can't imagine so now the it's all done right there and then we have the results that day and you um, can even see them in a list like who was the number one right, student who was the right. number one professional yeah so right that's, up on the that's list, really yeah. cool so we we're really thankful uh for pdn for for doing this for us it's it's huge cool yeah shout out to pdn photo district news yeah <clears throat> subscribe yeah. subscribe today <laughs> and enter their contests one more another question question was about the ballpark money figure to go on one of your fancy workshops they ain't cheap because they're they're no they're they're, they're expensive for sure and it depends on the destination uh depends on where we go but like most of the time we, we try to stay in five star lodges five star hotels so we right. do everything high end uh, right we could of course go to a three star hotel and charge half but our clients they really like uh high end high you end know. everything high end so um, it depends on the destination, but I would say they range from four thousand dollars up to ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, they're about eight to ten days. Um, we try not to do trips for two weeks because a lot of our clients are still you no, know, they they're working, so they can't take off from work that often or that long. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, an average of ten days. Um, yeah. And then uh, we do a, we're actually starting a series of lighting workshops in New York City uh, this summer. So uh -huh. uh, we're going to announce those actually this week. Nice. But that's something where we used to do a lot of domestic workshops, but then we started really focusing on international travel. Uh, but now we're also adding uh, lighting workshops with Bobby Lane. Oh, cool. And if you want to see all the itineraries, you can go to photoquestadventures.com, click on your desired location, and they've got the highlights, itinerary, lodging, pricing, 
uh, leaders and all that kind of stuff. So make sure to check out photoquestadventures.com and, and uh, book, book, book a trip today. Yeah, Book sure. your trip today. Come with us. Um, but uh, Miriam, I, I think that's about it. I, yeah. I super appreciate your being on the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was, uh, it was yeah. nice talking to you. Everybody can. Uh, everybody, go check out uh, Miriam's website, uh, MiriamEvers.com, PhotoQuest Adventures. All of that stuff is on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. You can check us out at PhotoBrigade.com slash live to see this live, see all of our previous events, and also see a list of our upcoming events. I'll be in Hawaii the next few weeks oh, nice. doing my workshop in Maui. Very um, nice. We're going to we're gonna try to do a few uh, podcasts, not live. We'll probably record them and post them later uh, from Hawaii. But uh, we'll be Snapchatting. So if you want to follow me on Snapchat, <laughs> Photo Brigade, all that kind of stuff on um, uh, Instagram and that and everything. Uh, Miriam, I appreciate Thank your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank appreciate you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>